Hey everyone, my name's Chris, and today we are going for a cruise, and we're going to be checking out the Roscoe 7 for 2022. It feels late in the season, but this is when they're coming in. This is when we're starting to see them. Many people have waited a long time for them, and it's good to finally have one in stock, and actually one in each color, although they are not lasting long. So if you saw our Roscoe 7 kind of preview video earlier on in the year, discussing the overall price bag, it did come in exactly as promised. With all the part shortages, supply chain issues, many of the bikes have seen major changes. Now this one has seen some major, major changes since its 2020 iteration, where it was a 27.5 with a 2.8 inch wide tire. It is now no longer anything like that. It does not have 120 mils of travel, but it has got a lot of improvements which make it closer to the Fuel X line now than it ever has been. Overall, if you're looking for this style of bike, you're probably starting to trail ride more and more. This is an excellent entry level, mid level, high level. It's hard to really say where it ends. The hardtail segment is growing as mountain bike grows and the full suspensions become higher and higher price due to part increases, supply chain issues, shipping, the bike company is just wanting to make more money, whatever reason they put on it. You know, entry level bikes now are starting $3,000 plus for a full suspension, whereas five to 10 years ago, you'd have been closer to $2,000. Now for that price, you're getting something looking like this, the Roscoe 7. They have improved it quite drastically. These are not the three buys that they used to be there, not the 26s or maybe 27s or maybe 29s with a terrible geometry. This thing rolls great. I haven't had a full field test on it, just riding around casually, taking it off some light trail. It rolls and feels great. It does not have the exact geometry of the Fuel X line, but overall, it is a very comfy bike. It still feels honestly upright with not too aggressive of a geometry that if I was just getting ice cream, I'm not going to be painful position essentially. It's not a race winning downhill position, but overall, it's a very comfortable cross country trail position. I still feel like I have power and control over the handlebars. I still feel very evenly weighted, not too heavy on the hands which I think is a lot of people's issues. They feel like there's a lot of pressure on the hands, and that's when maybe what you're doing, it isn't worth that level of bike. Coming back to something like a Roscoe is going to give you that happy in-between of comfort trail bike, but also trail bike more importantly. Features this has compared to its previous iterations is obviously that 29 inch wheel. It is doing a 2.6 inch wide tire. So surface area wise, you're actually getting a very similar setup to a 27 and a half by 2.8. It's just a little longer and narrower. So it'll be a little faster feeling. It definitely is noticeably faster feeling. It comes tubeless ready. So you're able to run a wide variety of pressures in this one ranging from probably 15 all the way up to 30. I myself prefer a little firmer of a pressure. I don't think that you need that much soft traction when you're going through, you know, regular trails relatively dry with such a wide aggressive tire on it. The 2.6s are very beefy. There is the Minion lookalike from Maxxis, just Bontrager's version. It's a go-to option. Most importantly with that tubeless, there's less chance of flats, a little bit more maintenance to it, but most people prefer the trade-off and with a tire of this size, those tubes actually remove close to a pound of weight from it, so it's a huge weight savings on top of that. The front fork is a reasonable one. Now, I hate explaining these part specs because there's obviously a lot higher end than that and there's obviously a lot lower end than that. These ones are an excellent performing fork. You have the air fork to it, so I'm able to customize this to your personal weight. We're able to get it really dialed in, and it makes a huge difference in performance and feel to it, just being able to customize it exactly the way you need it. Overall, though, there is small improvements that could be made, but not many people at this level would ever notice that. Could be a lighter weight, could be a little more efficient, but honestly, I didn't find the need when testing in the short amount of time I did 
to lock it out it is still pretty efficient through the climbs you do get a little bit of bobbing on the kind of heavier pedal strokes but it works well it's a rock shocks and it's not gonna let you down when you need it and it's a tapered head tube so it's something you could really increase or upgrade if you want it being a 140 mil to begin with it's going to work out really well and you can go up to 150 mil on this bike so it, it's pretty capable of fitting a wide variety of upgraded forks if you wanted drivetrain wise obviously one by 12 it's pretty much standard now we're getting dior set up a bit of mix of slx in there with the set little details which no one will really matter lightweight relatively durable the more you spend on a cassette and chain generally the longer it lasts it's hard to know if the math is there to say it's going to last twice as long for twice the price but it's probably pretty close this one though will shift fast shift easy the shimano controls up front are really easy to handle you can use your index finger to push or pull it's going to make it fast shifting no matter what you used to shram shimano either way it works well this is nicely paired with a pair of hydraulic disc brakes. They are a good quality one from Shimano. They've got some good feel, a little bit of modulation to them. Not too much customization and improvement or customization from it, but they are going to work really well for the intermediate to entry level. To It's a really wide variety of people that could ride this bike. If you're on a five or plus year older bike and you upgrade to this, you are hitting every nail on the head and getting every feature, which will blow away pretty much every bike you have unless you had a full XTR bike. Overall, specs, shifting, brakes, work well, tubeless tires, relatively lightweight, superb riding, slack head angle, steep seat tube so it pushes that weight forward and the body in a more comfortable position. It's all a nice mix of aggressive but comfortable. The dropper post obviously is a relatively good one. Got some fast response time, not too much wiggle through it. And I liked it, it works good. It's not the longest, but it's not the shortest around. I think everyone who buys this bike is gonna be really pleased. Who's gonna ride it though? That is the biggest question. And I am just, it's hard to say with this one. It's not got crazy high-end parts that I feel like a lot of people will be wanting to buy it if they had a five-year-old bike, which was full suspension, say. But it's got high enough end parts that it might make them think about it. They might miss that suspension, but you add a dropper post in, you add in all these newer features that they just don't have, whether it be three by and going to a one by. It's really hard to say whether this is a huge improvement for them. It's definitely an improvement, especially when your next option is like a Fuel EX5, let's say, and you're jumping up another $1,500. It's a pretty big price jump, and it's not a huge upgrade except for that small amount of suspension that is added. Overall, I think you'll like this bike. I think it's not needing many upgrades or many things done to it. But I think it will be something a lot of people like and a lot of people will enjoy riding whenever they get out on the trails and where no matter where you ride, this is going to be able to handle it. It's a fast trail bike. It's a fast cross country bike. It's comfortable upright. And I don't really have anything wrong to say about this bike. For about $2,000 Canadian, you're getting every bell and whistle you need except for that rear suspension and i don't know if it's really needed with that drop post you're really out of your seat a lot more than you ever have been so you're just going to lose a teeny bit of braking power and now we're really nitpicking like really nitpicking i don't think it's that big of a deal to even think about get out there buy the bike enjoy it and get some riding seasoning because i think it's going to be worth it hope for this helps it was a very quick easy video to make because it's an easy bike to talk about otherwise Comment below, subscribe. Thanks, guys.